Is, is there any other ongoing research related to um, GCS or MMMT anywhere else in the world? Yeah, so historically, these tumors have sort of been the the, the molecular analysis of these tumors have sort of been left to the more common tumors from the same organ. So uh, carcinoma sarcoma of the ovary has been treated clinically, as you know, and from a molecular standpoint, assumed to be the same as what I will call run-of-the-mill ovarian cancer. We know that's absolutely not true. Mm -hmm. So it has been a ne neglected area. There are not a lot of centers specifically dedicated to doing the research like this project. I will mention, uh, out of respect, um, Dr. Santine at Yale has had an interest in carcinoma sarcomas, has recently published one, I think, quite interesting paper uh, showing some initial molecular analysis. So there's a scattering of labs, but um, not a lot. And I think that this project will be far out in front of anything being done anywhere in the world. Do you anticipate any clinical trials in the pipeline for 2017? Yeah, so that's a really great question. Yeah. Um, the, the good news is that because of the molecular analysis, because of just a general appreciation for the natural history of the disease, it is now well recognized that it is a unique disease. Mm -hmm. So that has prompted its um, cooperative groups like Energy and institutions like Natural Cancer Institute to start to think about carcinoma sarcoma specific trials. It's been discussed, I've been present at those discussions, and I think you're going to see at least one or not two carcinoma sarcoma specific trials in 2017. Do you think, um, I guess, what's, what's the role of the immunotherapies that are emerging relative to you know this research and, and potential yeah. therapies down the road? Well, as you know, immunotherapy is a hot topic. It sure um, is, has yeah. shown some spectacular responses in other tumors. The early data for ovarian cancer has not been overwhelming. Um, but again, I think a lot of that is not applicable to carcinoma sarcoma because it's a different tumor. Mm -hmm. And there's some early molecular data that suggests that the targets for immunotherapy, like PDL1 and PD1, are present in the tumor. So I think it's a good candidate. And there's the type of trial where if you really want to do it and do it right, you need to have multiple centers across the United States dedicated to carcinoma sarcoma mm -hmm. and a um, well-written trial that's open at all those sites. Mm -hmm. And how do we make that happen? Well, it takes um, motivated investigators, which I think we are. Mm -hmm. It takes, a, um, I think, a, a network of, of dedicated clinicians researchers, which I think we have, mm -hmm. uh, certainly I know the sites throughout the United States that would be willing to do this. And then finally, as you know, what drives everything Money. is financial resources. Now, if we could get a pharmaceutical company interested, then that would be the ideal source. The complaint usually is that, you know, big enough. It's, a small, it's a small market and we've got bigger things to do. But that can be that can be addressed if the science behind it is really strong. Mm -hmm. You can get companies interested. Mm -hmm. um, what about the uh, the immunotherapies, like the vaccine trials? Does that have any relevance here, like the or the antibody drug conjugate uh, therapies? Are any of those yeah. on the horizon? So here? I'm most enthusiastic about. The immunotherapy trials using its uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors, which I just discussed. Right. I think vaccines are more problematic for a couple reasons. First of all, I don't think the targets for the vaccines have been well characterized. Some of the work we're doing may be able to do that. What you're looking for are proteins that come from the genes that have been mutated. They've been changed. Mm -hmm. They make good vaccine targets. So we need to do some work on that. Second concern about vaccines is they, I think most of us believe they're helpful in very small volume disease. They kind of clean up, they mop up what's left. So for recurrent tumors, uh, it would be a little more challenging. Um, but 
it's certainly still a worthy area of research. And then, you know, there's adoptive T-cell experiments. These are the CAR T-cells. Um, that's a really exciting area. Mm -hmm. uh, led to some spectacular responses in um, ALL, for instance. Is that where you're creating the antigen, using the tumor to create an antigen? Well, that would, be, that would be more a, that, that would be an ontologous T-cell transfer where you're um, uh, priming the T-cell, the patient's own T-cells, and then putting them back in. Yeah. CAR T-cells are actually engineered T-cells. They're, they're being engineered to a protein that's on the surface of the tumor, and that's where the challenge is. We need to find those yeah. for carcinoma sarcoma. Okay. You notice the common theme, which yeah. is a lot of this in the clinic leads back to getting the science right, mm -hmm. which is why this project is so important, mm -hmm. because it should deliver a lot of those endpoints. Mm -hmm. Cell surface markers, mutational peptides, these are all important things to lead to clinical trial design. Okay. Well, women will want to know, what can I do to help? They'll donate money, they'll donate tissue. What else can what else can we do to support this research and find a cure? Well, I think the first two you mentioned are important. This is a resource-dependent process. There's no issue about that. Um, I think material and tissue is very important, and that is not only primary tissue but recurrent tissue. We need to know what the evolution of the molecular events are mm -hmm. in this tumor. Don't know that yet. Uh, I think what you've done with this project and with the website is equally important. Uncommon tumor. So every woman felt she was by herself. Mm -hmm. Now you've begun to create a network and a place where people can, and patients can talk about this. Uh, that's going to be incredibly important. So let's say tomorrow the science leads me to a clinical trial uh, possibility. Mm -hmm. I need a mechanism by which we can spread the word on that. Uh, and if and, and so so the website and what you're doing is so important for that. But let's say we can't get a company involved, or we can't get the NCI National Cancer Institute interested. Mm -hmm. We need a group of ladies who are motivated to make that happen because there's nothing more convincing than motivated ladies. Show up at Genetech and. It Here works. It, it works. Been there, done that. Yep. Yeah, it worked with uh, Herceptin and breast cancer. Absolutely. What I would see in the timeline, I, I would see it in, would be that in a year, at most a year and a half, we have mapped out the molecular origins of this tumor. When I mean this tumor, I mean carcinosarcoma sarcoma is coming from either organ, and potentially any differences between those two. Um, we will have. Uh, a set of biomarkers that would be at least prognostic, meaning which patient is at highest risk for recurring and which is not, because we think there, we think there's a spectrum there. So this would be important for stratifying patients. Mm -hmm. We'd have the molecular data potentially to design trials, and then I, I, I really would like to get into the chromatin remodeling issue because I think there's an important element uh, within this tumor. Uh, from that angle, and those trials, those drugs are now in phase one, they're not in phase two. So we would be perfectly positioned in about a year and a half, maybe earlier, to begin to design a couple of trials and run with it. So it's some kind of breakthrough. Th that sounds like new science, breakthrough right. science. That's right. So that could really um, impact other cancers yeah. as well. Absolutely. So, so I will tell you, you could guess what another tumor is that has chromatin abnormalities. It's soft tissue sarcomas, mm -hmm. and that may be why carcinoma sarcoma shares that. I don't know, but um, the exciting part would be where would we be a year and a half, two years from now, that women who suffer this disease will not be alone, and they will have a portfolio of smorgasbord, scientifically sound clinical trials mm -hmm. uh, to either chase this tumor away or at least hold it at bay. Yeah. yeah. Rather than just pulling off random drugs from the shelf, we'll have that, and I think that's important. Yeah, it, it, it seems like there's broad variation, both in terms of treatment, knowledge base, um, innovation. Um, women who are out there in the hinterlands don't have access to the knowledge base to be able to even access clinical trials, if 
now let me ask you this. Are there any clinical trials available for women with carcinosarcoma? Now that women who are kind of on that continuum of disease yeah. might be able to, might help, might help them? Well, as you know, the answer, at least in this country, is really nothing that's specific for carcinosarcoma. Mm -hmm. uh, you were able to identify one across the, the pond, so to speak. Um, and that's unfortunately the state of the, state of the science right now. Um, and I, I, I'm anticipating that changing. I, I think the only way you can drive it, though, is with the scientific rationale. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, how many times do ladies with this tumor hear that sort of dreaded comment like, well, this is a rare tumor, so we have to extrapolate from it. Yeah, you know, those days need to disappear. The R word, rare. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're a bunch of motivated ladies, so <laughs> we uh, we just need to know what to do. Yeah. And I think your direction and help and, and working with the sun is just made me feel so optimistic and positive about uh, I think we're going to find, I think we're going to make history. Good. I like that. That's our challenge. That's the, that's the plan. That's what we're going to do. Yep.